Hey everybody, welcome to Northwoods Engineered. Thanks for watching my video today. I'm gonna to be showing you the implement lift that I made that can be used on the back of a UTV or a four-wheeler. Uh, this landscape rake, I made this last year. Uh, I have another video on that, I'll link that above. Uh, you used to just have a tongue off the front and you would pull it behind and then you'd have to flip it over and, and use the wheels to haul it around. Uh, I now have an electric actuator on a lift to raise it up and down. So uh, keep watching and I'll show you how I made it. Also, uh, if you can, please hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos. So the place I started out when I was going to design and build this was uh, 3D CAD. Uh, as you can see, I have the, the whole lift designed here and I have the landscape rake attached to it. Doing it in CAD was nice because I was able to uh, figure out exactly how I wanted the, the flat steel pieces to look. The shape of them, so like this piece and this piece are the ones that I'll eventually have cut out on a plasma cutter. Um, I'm also able to figure out the angles and then how far the actuator can bring the lift up and uh, push it down as well. So. I got the specs of the actuator I was going to use. Uh, the one I ordered was actually um, fairly expensive. It's about $150, but I wanted to have a, a nice one that was high quality. Uh, wasn't going to break while I was using it. Um, so here's like the horizontal position going into the hitch and fully retracted actuator. And then you can change the angle to see how it looks when it goes down and then check clearances as needed around where, where the actuator is going to hit. Um, this spot here uh, is pretty close, so that, that may hit in real life. Um, but you can always trim a little bit of that. Once I felt pretty good about the design in CAD, uh, I sent the files off to a friend to cut on the plasma table for the flat parts. And then the tube steel, uh, I was able to make a quick drawing with all the dimensions I needed laid out to start drilling holes. So uh, first step was start drilling the holes and then get the rest of the parts and, and weld it and assemble it all together. All right, I've got all my steel uh, marked out and dimpled in order to drill all the holes in it. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, I've got the flat pieces, which I got cut on a plasma cutter for me that I designed in Creo, and then I just cut all the tube steel. I drilled the holes at my house. My friend Andrew has been nice enough to let me use his shop for uh, cutting some steel and doing some welding. So we'll get those welded together next.
Okay, I've got all the parts uh, fit up. I'm just using my pickup, uh, the pickup hitch to mount it for now, just to test it out. Uh, I had to trim a couple parts. Uh, they, were, they were pretty close in CAD, but like right here it was hitting this bracket, so I just notched that out, and then I'm gonna end up notching it right up there too. But this is the uh, first time running it up and down. So I don't have the switch installed yet. I'm just uh, flipping the, the leads in order to make it go up and down. So it goes all the way up and then hits the limit switch for the actuator just before it touches a screw. So that's good. And it goes down. Currently hits on the back there where the top of the actuator mounts, but that's where I'm going to grind off just a little bit of material. Working on the switch assembly right now. So I've got a momentary two-way rocker switch. So one way goes up, one way goes down. And then I just got to connect to the connectors. Uh, one of these will go to the actuator. And then the other one will go to the 12 volt port that I have on either Ranger or four wheeler. So I've got all the pieces here after I painted them. Um, I have tested them out a bit. As you can see, it's a little marked up, but I'm just gonna show you how it all goes together. So this is the, the part that goes into the hitch. I have two different holes uh, in case you wanna bring it out to clear maybe an exhaust or something on, on a different machine. So that one goes in first. And take the <clears throat> bottom piece down here. I'll add nylock nuts on later for when I'm going to have permanent insulation, but I'm just have regular nuts now for ease of assembly. And then I've got pins and spacers to hold the actuator. And that's it, all assembled. Doesn't take too long. Uh, wire harness runs up to the front of the vehicle. And then, like I mentioned before, this used to just have a straight tongue on it. Um, I actually flipped over where it connects so that I could raise the, the rake up a little bit higher. So that slides on. This. And then I've got that, that 3 8 pin on the front so that you can 
you can rotate it. And there it is, all assembled. So I'll move it up and down so you can see that. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it does the job. And I ended up having to drill another hole a little farther back in that top tube to kind of uh, angle up on the rake so that it ended up getting higher off the ground. So once you added the rake, um, it does sag the back of the vehicle a little bit. Here's the harness that I have hooked up. That wire goes back to the actuator. Uh, the nice thing about the Ranger is it has this plug right on the dash for plugging in the to get power. And then I've got the switch here, which I still need to add labels for up and down. And then I added a four amp resettable circuit breaker. So the main thing I've been using the, the rake for is uh, basically trying to smooth out soil after I've tilled it or dissed it for food plots mostly. Uh, we also use it to clear sticks off, off some trails up where we hunt. Uh, behind me right now we have a spot where we're turning an old septic mound into a native prairie planting. So I just tilled a bunch of it and then I'll just go over it with this uh, to level and smooth things out. So the nice thing about this lift is that I'll be able to build some other implements for it and I'll make it similar, the attachment point similar to this. So you can just slide one off and put another one on. A few things I want to make are uh, like an S-Tine cultivator. Um, that'd be pretty simple, just basically a straight bar with the S-Tines on it. Um, a dethatcher with like spring teeth on it would be nice to have. Um, there's a lot of possibilities out there. So. Thanks for watching my video. Hopefully uh, it can inspire you or help you if you're working on something like this yourself and uh, appreciate the views.